even though you've moved to the Google SQL database, you've moved from the on-premises world to the cloud world, the work you need to do is still going to be roughly the same. So if you're using some tool like SQL Dependency Tracker, you're going to want it to work on the cloud the same way as you work locally. So the good news is we can do that. You can see here I'm already connected up to a Google SQL database, and I've got my data uh, databases I've uh, collected. I'm going to pick one of them, and it's going to go up to the cloud, retrieve that database, it's going to bring back down the schema, and I can then decide which of these parts of the schema I would like to add in. Now I'm going to capture the whole thing. And so I'm going to take all that and add the selection to the project. So you can now see the entire project is pulled in. All of the information that we have is available. And so I can say, that's great, that's good to go. I'm going to close this off. And now you see SQL Dependency Tracker all set up. Let's zoom in on various parts of this. Now you can see that I've got my basic setup, my, my view, my tables, um, a stored procedure that references various tables. They're all available. They're all showing me what's going on. Now I've also got a whole bunch of other objects, um, roles and schemas that I may or may not want to add, I may or may not want to modify. Again, it's, it's all about how you want to use the tool yourself. But the key point here is that the tool is working. We are able to walk through and see the dependencies. We are able to select particular details and see how they relate to one another. The fact that there's a, a radio and vendor relationship the fact that the view is used in both of those tables, um, the fact that this store procedure references multiple tables, all of this stuff is taken from the dependency tracker because fundamentally, when you're working with a database, you're working with a database. And the fact that that database is on Google as opposed to running on your local SQL Server instance actually doesn't make that big a difference here. So that means that if, if you are working with SQL Dependency Tracker, if you are used to having this functionality, none of that goes away. You're still going to be able to apply it. And so you can still add more objects, update the schema, ensure that you've got what you need in order to use this tool the way you're used to using this tool. Thanks for watching. My name's Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.